NoCuffs.com. You probably recognize him from mm. all the ads that are <laughs> on heavy rotation well, and at it, this station. And I do some legal analyst work from time to time, right. too. But well, let's thank say, you for Let's that. say off the top here first, yeah. you know, be safe out there. Don't drink and drive. Absolutely. In your experience, though, are there a large amount of people who are wrongfully arrested when they go through these DUI checkpoints? Well, there's definitely some dolphins that get caught in the tuna net, mm -hmm. as they say. The first thing to be aware of if somebody were arrested after going through one of these checkpoints is they definitely want to consult with an attorney, whether it's me or somebody else. But how do get you with do a that? Lawyer. Well, you pick up the phone and you call a lawyer because there are some requirements for that checkpoint to be legal. There has to be advanced public Publicity. There has to be certain ways that the checkpoint is run where people are stopped based on a mathematical formula rather than the police individually picking out, no, I think she looks bad, I'll pull her over, that sort of thing. Otherwise, it's a violation of people's Fourth Amendment rights to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures. So the first thing you want to do if you are arrested following if one of those, arrested. get to a lawyer. Now, if you're going through one of those checkpoints, um, what you do really is a function of whether or not you choose to be fully cooperative uh, and risk giving the police evidence that can be used against you. What do you, you mean by that? Well, you don't have an obligation really to speak to law enforcement. You don't have an obligation to answer a lot of routine questions such as, have you had anything to drink? But Where are what's you driving in your from? best interest? Well, look, when a case, if, if somebody is, is arrested from following a DUI checkpoint, a lot of those answers that people give where they think they're talking themselves out of trouble, right. all that serves to do is talk them deeper into trouble. I only had two glasses of wine with dinner. It, it's um, a joke with law enforcement. If you ever tell the police, I had two beers two hours ago, you're going to jail because the police interpret that as somebody who is minimizing is and, and back, well, and also in backdating their drinking. Really, because of the way alcohol is metabolized by the body, the best answer that you could give is usually the truthful one, which is, I just finished drinking and then got behind the wheel. You know, it was just the end of last call and I had my last sip mm -hmm. and started driving. But people don't do that. They try and minimize it and say two beers two hours ago, thinking that they're making it better actually makes things much, much worse. So I want to ask you this because this is a story that went viral. I'm sure you've seen it. There was an attorney in Florida who was telling people they if you hold up a sign, right. and I have it right here because you can print it out. He says it's legal in California. There he is. He was showing people, if you put up this sign and it says, I remain silent, no searches, I want my lawyer. Right. He says, if you have all the pertinent information, you put it in a bag, you just show him your, your identification, that's enough. You're not required to pull over anything. And for the most part, people are just, the, the cops just like wave them through because right. you're providing them with the information that they need. And that's right. Does that work? That, that does work. If you are going to, if you want to go that route, you are absolutely free to do so. Just like you are also free to record that interaction. You know, the smartphone is everywhere, right. and there have been a lot of cases that have been in the news sure. where police get caught doing really bad stuff because of either citizen journalists or everybody becomes one because they've exactly. got their smartphone. So that serves almost two purposes. Yes. Because, you know, you're not, you're kind of keeping the cops on their toes too, for not illegally searching a vehicle that they That's have, right. have no right to. And you're potentially gathering exculpatory evidence as well. So if you've got a passenger in the car as you're having this encounter with law enforcement, I would urge them to record it because that could be something that could be used useful later on down the line. On the other side of the coin, though, um, you know, uh, groups like Mothers Against Drunk Driving, other grassroots have tried so hard to educate the public to get more DUI checkpoints right. in place, you know, than just a generation ago. Um, do they help keep people from driving drunk when you know that there's going to be checkpoints you're not going to drink or maybe you call a cab? Right. And they're well, usually but, but that is exactly part of the reason or the justification to allow the checkpoints. Remember, I was talking about the different requirements that you have to have a legal checkpoint. In California, one of those requirements is advanced publicity. And so even though that advanced publicity may make a, an, an impaired driver think twice before getting behind the wheel, that's exactly the point. And so having that advanced publicity out there is something that is actually important for that checkpoint to be legal. If it's not done, that's a way that a lawyer can actually get evidence suppressed.
Before I let you go, one last yes. question. Uh, how much is it going to cost you if you get, I mean, they're expensive to defend against a DUI case, right? Well, besides defending against a DUI, and I would say that, that actually a good defense, you know, good lawyers aren't cheap and cheap lawyers aren't mm -hmm. good. So if you're in that situation, it's a good thing to invest in. But I've heard the uh, auto club say that the cost of a DUI, when you fa if you get convicted and you factor in the increase in insurance and so forth, can be as high as $20,000. We get it. You're not cheap. <laughs> well, he, he doesn't dress this well for Cheap nothing. and tawdry. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. But that's another story, Bobby. Yeah, you just say that because you know me. <laughs> Thanks a lot, buddy. Darren Thanks. 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 Thanks.